Thanks, Hugh. Welcome to viewers in London and the South East. Our top story tonight. The military's drafted in as the ambulance service prepares for strike action tomorrow. And a coroner rules that the 11 men who died at Shoreham Air Show were unlawfully killed. Hello. As the wave of winter strikes continues, the military have been drafted in to fill in some of the gaps in staffing. Nurses held a second strike today, affecting five hospitals in the capital, and tomorrow the ambulance service is due to take action. It's expected many of those calling 999 across London and the wider southeast will not be sent an ambulance, although it's been agreed the most serious Category 1 calls will be responded to. Luke Hanrahan reports. On the brink of the first London Ambulance Service strike since 1989, as paramedics, control room workers and drivers take industrial action over pay, leaving hundreds of patients across London who've had heart attacks and broken bones, having to find ways to get themselves to accident and emergency. I think tomorrow is going to be a very difficult day. It's going to be a very difficult day because we're already extremely busy and hospital handover delays have been very long. However, I am confident that anyone who phones 999 who has a life-threatening emergency, we will respond to tomorrow as normal. London Ambulance Service has declared a critical incident ahead of the strike, advising people with non-life-threatening injuries not to call 999. The walkout of ambulance workers between midday tomorrow and midnight has alarmed Londoners. Do you agree with the strike action? I think there should be another way around, but... Uh, so I guess I would rather they didn't strike. I think, you know, people who are needing instant help should be able to get it. I do support them, and I think they're doing the right thing. I think they should strike. They need to get their message across. They've worked all through the pandemic, um, and they're not getting any recognition for it. People with life-threatening illnesses and injuries are still being advised to call 999. The people who drive these vehicles might be striking, but military personnel have been drafted in. Though they don't have the same qualifications, they can't drive through red lights or put their sirens on. There will be an impact on patients. The health secretary has said he's disappointed union members are going ahead with strike action, which is likely to have a knock-on effect on the ambulance service until Friday as workers continue their fight for what they see as fair pay. Luke Hanrahan reporting. A coroner has concluded 11 men who died when a jet crashed onto a dual carriageway during an air show were unlawfully killed. The men died when a Hawker Hunter plane crashed on the A27 in West Sussex as it carried out a stunt at the Shoreham Air Show on the 22nd of August 2015. The coroner said the pilot Andy Hill, who was cleared of manslaughter by gross negligence in 2019, missed two opportunities to prevent the crash. Ben Weiss reports. A seven-year wait for answers, finally at an end. It's exactly what, what, what we wanted. It's exactly what we think Jacob deserves, that this is justice. When a vintage jet crashed onto the A27, Bob and Caroline's son Jacob was killed, one of 11 who lost their lives that day. The coroner found all 11 had been unlawfully killed as a result of a plane being flown so badly as to amount to gross negligence. Remember, the pilot was cleared of manslaughter three years ago, a criminal case with a very different standard of proof and one which today's decision does nothing to reverse. But it's a decision which matters hugely to the families. The deaths of the 11 innocent men in the Shoreham Air Show disaster were avoidable. The bereaved families have waited more than seven years to reach this point, and the senior coroner's conclusion will not ease the pain of their loss, but their voices have been heard and justice has been done. Could this bring closure to a community whose hearts poured out across the Ada, who continue to grieve? What we all remember so clearly all those years ago as it was, was the way that, first of all, the emergency services responded with huge professionalism, as we would expect, but also the way the whole community came together wanting to do their bit to stand shoulder to shoulder with the grieving uh, families. 
closure too for the families like Bob and Caroline Schilt. Right from the very beginning, we were prepared to trade time for... Um, the truth. The truth, yes, for the, for a thorough investigation and so on. And, and I, I, um, I think that's been achieved. Mm. The coroner started this inquest by apologising to the families for the length of their wait for answers. Today, she told them she hoped that finally, through this inquest, they had a voice. And Vice reporting. South East Water has reported that water is starting to come back on tonight in Crowborough and they hope thousands more in West Kent and Sussex will have supplies restored for Christmas. The company has apologised as 15,000 homes and businesses across Tunbridge Wells, Crowborough, East Grinstead and the surrounding area have been affected by shortages since the weekend. There was anger today and calls for compensation as water at bottled stations was rationed and then ran out. Time now for a look at the weather across London and the southeast. Here's John Hammond. Thanks very much for a good evening. Well, that cold spell seems a long time ago now, doesn't it? It's a mostly mild prospect for the next few days. There'll be some wet weather, there'll be some sunshine, often quite blustery and only a slim chance, I think, of a white Christmas at this stage. It has been quite chilly this evening, but temperatures actually will be rising as we head through the second part of the night. There'll be rain knocking on the door of the region by breakfast time. So if you're heading out through tomorrow, there will be a splash of rain moving its way west to east through the morning. It won't hang around, but it could be quite heavy for a time. Some quite gusty winds might linger across the far southeast parts of East Kent, for example, but uh, most other places brightening up quite nicely temperatures getting up into double figures. The outlook stays mostly quite mild in the run up to Christmas. As I say, some rain, some shine. Thank you very much, John. That is it from me and the late team. We're back with all your updates in the morning from 6.30. Good night.